Now, the great thing I remember about you is just you always sort of uh, just sort of rampant positivity <laughs> and supportiveness for everyone in the horror film community. And you. What's your secret? Yeah. What's your secret? Yeah. How do you stay positive? How in, can you not these- love the horror community? <laughs> well, that's the horror community is the most supportive because yeah. even the worst of the horror films they've got fans and supporters yeah you know yeah i mean horror i mean you know it's it's an incredibly dynamic genre um and it's reliant on change so so it's always churning and it's always i mean i think the thing i I love about it the most is that it seems like it's the genre that's that's most designed to to find voices outside of the system um so it's 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 the most vulnerable for access which is great it's just constantly refreshed by by new voices and i think that what ends up happening is the people who operate in horror kind of bring that sensibility with them you know, most people I know that are that are working in horror, that love horror, are always like finding people who are trying to get in and saying, "Come on in, here, let me hold the door for you." You know, I think like the James Wan does that Atomic Monster. Jason Blum has been doing that for years. Like, it's just kind of, it just seems to be very genre specific, and I love it. And and I would also say most in tune with the zeitgeist. Yeah. Because the pathway to an idea is sort of in in the air. Which I've been reading that David Lynch book, Catching the Big Fish. Oh, I haven't about read about it ideas. Yet. It's no. so great. Yeah. It's so great. But it's it's the ideas are sort of in the zeitgeist, in the air. And I think horror is kind of the first genre that gets to, and then maybe documentaries later because. But like something is out there, an idea, and it's processed through the horror meat grinder into talking about something that's happening now. Yeah, and I know with the Grudge, I mean that was, I mean the Grudge, different in the sense that it was, you know, based on the Japanese horror, mm-hmm. right? Which and then, was popular at the time, very popular, popular, very popular. And then you did the Americanized version. What was the pathway? It must, it must have been one of those things where it's like lots of meetings. The Grudge. Yeah, the, to, to get to <laughs> lots, of awful, yes, yeah, lots of awful meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the origin was with uh, Roy Lee. I had, I had a general meeting with Roy. Um, and uh, and we just hit it off. Like I walked into his office, and he had the Stephen King, you know, first editions chronologically arranged by publication date, which I had in my in my That's house. Awesome. And yeah, it was like right away we were on the same page. And and uh, and I said, oh, I, I I heard you're doing the remake of Ringo, and he's like, you've seen Ringo? Um, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I love Asian horror. And and so you know, so we just had a lot of common ground. And then he had he had gotten the Juan tapes of the original Juan TV show. Um, from like two days before and he's like oh dude you have to see scenes from this thing and he showed me scenes in his office in the middle of the day that just freaked me the hell out um, and I took him home and watched it and there were no subtitles like we it didn't you know and those are already really disorienting stories I'm sure you've seen the originals mm-hmm. and uh, so we just teamed up on it from the beginning uh, and I, this is especially true of the horror community I mean this is sort of hearkening uh, uh, back to an, uh, a uh, a time time that has passed us, but I remember making so many VHS tapes oh my God, for other yeah. people, copy to copy, right? Mm-hmm. Peer to peer, you're just like, get, oh, dude, you have to see this. Yep. You know, you have to see guinea pig or whatever it is, you know, like there are those, like, it's almost like a dare when you hand someone that tape, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I'm sure that's where that idea came from, right? Of watch the tape and you're, you'll die. It must have been because yeah, I like, think there was, that was where the cross collateralization really started. It was right. like John Woo trying to watch a John Woo movie right. before they had theatrical distribution. It was all on a tape. And you guys traded tapes. My generation, like, I, I was always drawn to, to foreign horror films. Mm. And I remember before your remake came out, like I downloaded the uh, the original Grudge on Kazaa. <laughs> oh yeah, Kazaa. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a pirate. I swear. <laughs> no, no. I, I was I was a product of the video store too. And uh, I mean, you know, we kind of I think we're similar. Yeah, age I, and, I worked at a video store. And yeah. that that whole the the glory of the VHS horror, like that window of time where just horror exploded on video because people could make movies without the pressure of trying to get into theaters. Right. And how great that was to kind of seed people, you know, and, and find this whole new, you know, generation of horror fans. 